Okay, so this is part four. And we're going to start with this weird function right here where I'm going to generate this variable weird. And I'm going to make it one if there is a comma. I'm going to make it zero if there's no comma. So if there's no comma at all in the string and it hadn't ended, if I you know did not denote it to be backward, then I'm going to say that these are like the remainder strings. These are kind of weird. So I'm going to make them weird equals zero. I guess the thing I should have done was make them weird equals one to indicate that, you know, if that is a one, then it is weird. Um, I did it backwards, I guess, where weird is zero if it um, does not have a comma anywhere in it. So like even these backward ones that had had a comma in it now do have a comma in them because I added them there in line 66. Okay. And then, of course, if you want to, line 70 here will list out all the ones where weird is zero. So you can take a look at what those are and kind of examine what's going on with your data. Um, see which ones are weird. Okay, now I'm going to say what if there's parentheses in here. So I'm actually going to look within manip name for the left parentheses. And I'm going to generate the variable parens1 and parens2 and possibly parens3 and 4 if there are multiple instances of the left parentheses. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, what if the parentheses aren't the very last thing in here? Then it could be the case that um, I want to look for all that stuff that's after the right parentheses. So I'm going to see the stuff that's inside the parentheses I'm going to call add back one. So I'm going to generate this add back variable. I'm going to look within parens two, which is the variable I just created here that's all the stuff to the right of the left parentheses. And I'm going to take all the stuff to the left of the right parentheses and call that add back one. And then of course I'm gonna add the actual left and right parentheses to it and you know replace add back one with that because they don't, the parsing uh, strings do not appear inside the parsed variable. Um, I'm gonna rename that parens. Okay. And then um, I was adding back add back two for a while and I think I actually went through my data and eliminated all the cases where there was add back two so I had to comment this out um, so I have replaced my nickname with that. Um, and here I left this part in unchanged. I could have changed it once I commented out this previous line, line 78. But I'm actually just doing the same thing again where I generate end parens, where end parens had been something different if there had been two instances of, of left parentheses and I was looking at what was going on there. But, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just taking the thing again and I'm just trimming end parens one and and basically just taking off the parentheses. So this doesn't do anything different from, I could have done this before that line 78, but um, just to be consistent with line 78, I left it in there. It doesn't do any harm. Um, and then I drop end parens one. So at the end, I'll be dropping a lot of stuff just because um, a lot of things are duplicated and unnecessary. So I do that from time to time. Um, and you don't want to have all these extra variables in there. And I'm going to actually add all these things back to my name at the end, like the the suffix and a state and all that. So there's no need to hold on to all these variables. You can keep them if you want, just delete them from the drop functions. Um, but, you know, I delete them just to keep the data set kind of small. Okay, here I'm generating uh, a duplicate observation variable. If I find that the string ends in the number one, the number two, the number three, or the number four, I think that that's only gonna occur if I ever have something like, um, you know, some people appear multiple times and because of the way I've had to do other operations in Stata. I can't have um, multiple instances of the same string and name. So um, it'll be like Joel Smith. And so I'll have to have Joel Smith one and Joel Smith two. So here I'm just indicating that those are duplicate observations with the duplicate observations variable. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pick this up in a second with another part just to keep these all brief. So stay tuned for that one.